time to complain I just take it like deep and I'm just stay down in the tank Cause money, 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 what we all gon' make Stand for something, for for everything That you what they say, you see my dreams come through Through my Versace lines Baby, is you ride today or you gon' switch up on me, man Everybody say they love you, then they all turn to be fake Oh no, I'm just tryna stack me up some veggies I go to the moon and I flow like a rocket I saw They just want me be down, but I say fuck it, hell no Smoke me a blunt and a water, we roll, yeah, we roll Money gon' make it, people really gon' change it Niggas turn to be fake because they Barbies and brats Out your chitty and chat and look, you really be capping Out your telling the facts, but lower case on the cap Because they really be rat, got social media What's going on, family? Amazing, amazing news Listen, Forex Mentorship is now 100% free I need you to make sure you join the Discord ASAP Link is below. Link just pop up in the screen. That's all you got to type in inside your browser. Go in the description, click it. Oh, hold on. By the way, I get it. You're probably wondering, where is Mr. Killer Markets once again? And listen, you guys are probably saying, damn, does this guy just record? If she pans this way. She, I'm recording in a bunch of people. People are looking at me. Doesn't matter. No, listen, we're out here. We're living our life as you need to do. Stop worrying about what the fuck people think. Live life for you. Worry about what you're doing. Worry about what you got going on. All these places I go and I take photos sometimes and some people look like, aren't you used? No, nigga, I'm not fucking used. I was broke. I was broke as fuck five years ago. Now we're living and I want to provide the same value for you all. On top of a mountain in Guatope, a lot of my girlfriends up here with me, they want, they're, they're with their boyfriends or they're playing shy. Nah, I'm playing. But um, yeah, man, Forex Mentorship is now free. We're providing Forex inside it, crypto, e-com, fitness, nutrition, motivation, um, maybe more things as well as time come on. Man, my bag is on the floor while I'm recording for you guys. It's different, isn't it? But um, what's most important is you guys remember, get active in the community. Make sure post notifications are on. Make sure you're um, paying attention. Got my boys over there. Uh, they're doing their own thing while I'm out here recording some content for you all, but I just really wanted to make this video real quick. Just put on my YouTube, let you all know Forex Mentorship is now free. Uh, I'm using a very good, reliable broker. Make sure you click um, the one of the videos inside. You're gonna see where I tag and talk about how to build a trading business, how to get started with the broker. If you wanna invest in a pound that I have going on, it's a new trading business that I have. I'm guaranteeing about one to five, 10% a month if it's more. Kudos to you. But um, yeah, see you all later. So we're going over what is Forex exactly. And this is an introduction to the largest financial system in the world. And when it comes to the largest financial system in the world, the reason why it is so, because banks trade inside and as banks monopolize all the money in the whole world. So what exactly is Forex? Forex is short for the foreign exchange market. The Forex market is the most liquid market in the world. It exchanges approximately $4.3 trillion per day, which honestly, I think right now it may be more, opposed to less liquid markets such as um, the New York Stock Exchange that exchanges approximately $20 billion per day. Now, people turn to you know trade Forex market for a variety of reasons. And when it now comes to uh you know the reasons why people do it it can even be more than what is listed here but one is you can trade from anywhere in the world two is the most liquid market in the world traders can profit whether a pacific currency is increasing or decreasing in value forex does not require a high initial investment traders um can be given for as little as a hundred dollars and right now um i currently actually shared a broker where traders can deposit as little as $50, which is also Mugan. Um, wanna obviously share the link after this. Um, but next thing is high liquidity allows leverage amounts. Um, you know, sometimes high liquidity allows large number amounts of leverage. Some brokers allow leverage up to one to one thousand. I've seen another broker allowed up to one to two thousand, which is insane. <laughs> Um, obviously traders that choose the one to 2000, I'm sure majority blow their accounts and there may be very few that actually do profit from the one to 2000 leverage. The goal of Forex is to buy a currency that is anticipated to gain value or sell a currency that is anticipated to lose value against another currency. 
Now, what do people trade, right? When trading Forex, it is inevitable that traders will run across currencies known as the majors. This term refers to the most frequently traded currencies in the world, with a list normally including the euro, which is short for EUR, US dollar, which we obviously use as USD, Japanese yen, which is JPY, the Great Britain pound, which is GBP, and the Australian dollar, which can be called Aussie or AUD, and the Swiss franc CHF, which is CHEF for short. Now, the four major currencies of trade. The Forex market opens up at sun. It opens up on Sunday. Um, the time changes, so I don't want to give the, the exact time right now, just because you know when we have a uh, time change, um, when we have daylight saving, obviously the time changes when the market opens. So I don't want to give a time right now, but I'll give based on the sessions when it starts. Right. So you have the London session, which starts at three a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then you have the New York session, which starts at 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So just so everyone can know, 8 a.m. is the London, is known as London and New York crossover, okay? This is when you would now meet, this is when now you would have maybe a little bit more volatility on pairs like GBP USD or even sometimes GBP JPY. Now, market conditions has changed so much since when I first started trading. And this is why I'm honestly working on a new course right now, just with how I maneuver inside the markets. As the old one is still good, still the strategies, whatever the case may be, but I've learned more and learned how to adapt to the new market conditions. We have the Sydney session, which starts at 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then we have the Tokyo session, uh, 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which obviously cross over with London session, where you may see a lot of volatility within the first hour of 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. with GBP JPY, right? Because this is when now the London market is open and also the Tokyo session, which is where we have JPY running. If you all wanted to know that, of course. Now, during summer and winter months from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., London and New York session overlap. Uh, like I obviously was explaining, you can see right here, 3 a.m. to 12 p.m., um, now, how to be profitable at trading, I deliberately put this over here on the side. So everyone should actually screenshot this. It shows you your win ratio, right? So if you are 20% profitable and you have a one to five risk reward ratio, meaning your, your, your profit, your reward is five times more than your um, risk, which means like, let's say you have a stop loss of 25 pips and then your reward is 125 pips. That's a one to five risk reward. You could be 20% profitable, and at the end of the month, you're still profitable if you use a one to five risk reward ratio. Okay. Now let's take a look at um everything else when it comes to this. You have one to one, which you'd have to be 60% profitable in order to be profitable. So this is very important. Just screenshot that. Now, London session. It is a session that 99% of traders keep their eyes on as London controls essentially the entire European market movements, roughly 30% of all market transactions take place in the London session. The following is important to keep in mind when trading the London session, okay? You can screenshot this as well. Due to the London session overlapping with two other major trading sessions, if you remember, you could go back, we talk about the Tokyo session and the New York session, okay? This leads to a massive surge in liquidity which can also lead to lower transaction costs as there will be more volume per user at that broker level. Transaction costs can be meaning like the commission or the swap that the brokers are charging, okay? The London session is known to be specifically volatile for the euro um, and the USD, which is EU, as there is plethora of European news that is released within a couple hours of the opening of the session. Most major movements that occur during the London session also carry over into the New York session. This is super important to uh, make note of, like I explained with GBP, JPY, and GBP, USD already. So the best times to trade EU and GBP, USD is during the overlap of the London and New York session. Price action may slow down and trades start to change as the European traders close their trades and take their profits. Remember that. Now. The New York session, oh man, 
my favorite session just to trade gold in, right? This session begins at 8 a.m. EST, and this is the most traded session among traders, okay? Now, all, amongst all four traders, to be honest, New York session, and uh, a lot of you may already know this. So, is primarily due to the influence, influential market news that makes market moves occur during the session. The most commonly traded pair during the session is USD, JPY, and Euro USD as well as gold sometimes. But now looking at the Forex uh, prop firm statistics, you have US 30 and gold normally traded during this time. It's funny. <laughs> A lot of people probably definitely still trade USD, JPY. But when it now comes to the statistics from the prop firm, you have... We have information that um, gold and US 30 is one of the most traded pairs during this time. Now, the following is important to keep in mind when trading um, the New York section. And the reason why I made this so detailed is because I want everyone to understand this. And just because of the mentorship we're offering inside the Discord for free, I want all of you to be aware of certain things. So screenshot this as well. Major news is released in the beginning. I'm um, sorry, I was just putting some of my clothes in a dryer family. I uh, just came back from a tour. But uh, every major transaction in the world involves the U.S. dollar. But if you all are keeping with the news, you all now know about BRICS. And um, let me see if Milton is still on this call. All right, cool. Milton, I don't know if you heard about um, BRICS. Brazil, Russia, India, um, China. I don't remember what S stands for. It was my first time. Damn, buddy. Damn. Okay, cool. I'm going to drop some information on that inside the Discord as well. But um, so they basically, yeah, I don't really want to make this call about this, but they're basically pulling away from uh, the US dollar, right? And um, it's basically an acronym for the five leading economies, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, uh, I can't remember what the S stands for, but it might be South um, Africa. And what they're doing is they formed, um, you know, their own currency and uh, basically a powerful group of the world's leading emerging market economies. And what they do is supposedly they're supposed to aim to provide peace um, and development. And I think maybe some other things that they're talking about, but now they're going to be trading with their own currency or maybe Chinese. I, I don't remember exactly but it won't be trading in the US dollar anymore. So that's major, but um, let's go back to this. So when any major news comes out, which affects the USD, anything that is directly related to it will move drastically. So the New York session begins to majorly slow down after 1 p.m. EST, and there's almost little or no movement Friday afternoons. So that I definitely, don't enter a trade a Friday afternoon unless I'm swinging a trade and I just hold it, okay? There's almost, um already talked about that part. Let's go on now to Tokyo session. The Tokyo session is often referred to as the Asian session because the Tokyo is the, is the final capital of Asia. And Japan is the third largest trading center in the world. And the Japanese yen is the third most traded currency, partaking in 16.5% of all forex transactions. Now, I believe that this will increase because of BRICS, like I already explained um, uh, about everything that's going on now with China and, you know, they're pulling away. And I believe Japan will follow, but uh, I don't know yet, but I do believe it will increase. Overall, about 21% of all transactions take place during the session. The following is important to keep in mind when trading the Tokyo session. The most commonly traded pair is USDJPY. But based on Forex uh, prop firms, GBPJPY is traded more than this pairs with their firms. And this is obviously, you know, Forex prop firms have a lot of traders all over the world uh, doing challenges, doing their free challenges, doing pay challenges, live accounts, etc. The Bank of Japan has been known to inject massive amounts of government printed money into the markets should they feel their currency is getting too strong. This has caused the markets to move 2,000 pips within 20 minutes in the past, which I have experienced myself. Liquidity can often be very thin, therefore making the session boring because of the lack of activity. Now, 
most times during the Tokyo session, we can probably catch maybe 50, 60 pips sometimes, but sometimes it's boring. But now, like I said, the market is changing. So sometimes you may see GJ run about 100, 200 pips, right? But um, it is more likely to see movement in Asia Pacific pairs like AUD USD, NZD USD, opposed to pairs like GBP USD when it comes to the Tokyo session, because uh, it's out of G it's out of the London session, which is GBP, and it's out of the New York session, which is USD. Um, so most action takes place early in the session due to major economic data that is released. The AUD USD is known to make larger movements during this time, which is a very slow pair. So here's a recap. If you're looking for times of major volatility, then look for times when two sessions overlap. Also note, trading on Fridays and Sundays can be a costly venture. A lot of price traps happen on Sunday and obviously the same thing on Friday when the market is closed. All to remember, I want to go over this later because the mentorship is free. I'm going to be mentoring everyone for the year for free inside of Discord. Um, that every Friday, the first Friday in every month is NFP. Now, the Friday, what we have um, coming up, because today is Saturday, the 29th of April, and uh, Friday coming up should be May 5th or 4th, if I'm counting correctly, because tomorrow would be May 1st, maybe, or Monday would be May 1st. But um, that Friday would be now NFP, non-farm payroll. This would be volatile. You don't want to be trading money if you're a beginner. You just watch and observe, mark up or open up a demo account and take a trade. But don't risk your live money, man. It's not worth it, right? Because slippage is real, especially if a prop firm account. Now, like it says right here, paths can often go one way Sunday and completely reverse come Monday. So if you do make money on Sunday, get the fuck out of that trade and uh, <laughs> be prepared for Monday. All right. Same case for Fridays. Never hold a trade for the weekend as you're exposed to gaps in the market. Come Sunday when markets open due to news announced when the market is closed throughout the weekend. Mark price is always moving, even when the market is closed. This is why we have gaps, okay? We don't have jumps, we have gaps. The only exception is if you plan on swinging a trade for an extended period of time and it is a part of your strategy, okay? Now, the three type of analysis. Traders often break down the analysis of the charts or Forex pairs into three different categories. Technical analysis, fundamental analysis, or trader sentiment. Screenshot this. This is important to read for you to understand um, uh, the free type of analysis because you want to be implementing all, not just one, not just two, all. This is very important, okay? Now, here we also talk about what technical analysis use. I also want everyone to screenshot this as well. We have trend that follows, support and resistance, and oscillators, okay? I've been trying to join the Discord. It won't let me. Uh, Robert, message me on whatever application you have me on, Instagram or Facebook. I'll personally send you the link. Um, probably I need to update it on a website uh, just so the link is new. The link may have expired, but I will update that for you, my friend. Um, support and resistance and oscillators. Now I don't use oscillators, but uh, obviously a lot of persons use this. We have uh, the RSI, the MACD, and obviously the RSI is very popular. I used to use it. I think I still have it on one of my phones, but I, I don't use it. It is a very good indicator, but I just don't use it. Um, let's move on to the next one. You also have volume based indicators, which a lot of persons do use. We have strength-based indicators, uh, which is also the ADX indicator. I talk about this in my previous course. Um, I will also do a training on how to use that indicator as well. We have volatility-based indicators. And these indicators basically monitor fluctuations in currency pairs or instruments by comparing uh, the current price to historical values. Also make sure I screenshot this as well. Now, momentum-based indicators, okay? Uh, these are used to determine a strength or weakness of a trend as it progresses over time. This is like the RSI and the MACD, like I already explained. And um, a lot of persons obviously use uh, the moving average as well, okay? Now, technical analysis using live data. 
how to review a currency pair. The reason currency is quoted in pairs is because you are simultaneously buying one currency and selling the other. Going long versus short. This is very important to understand. Long basically is the term used for buying and short is a term used for sell. Um, long means you're buying the base currency and selling a quoted currency. And going short means you're selling a base currency and buying the quoted currency. Bid slash ask price. This is very important for you to understand as well. Majority of the time, the bid is lower than the asking price. The bid price is the best available price the broker is willing to buy the base currency for in exchange for the quoted currency to sell to the market. The ax price is the best price at which a broker is willing to sell the base currency for in exchange for the quoted currency, okay? This means the ax price is the best available price to purchase from the market. The spread is super important. When you hear spreads are high, means you need to stay the fuck out of that market, okay? A spread is simply the difference between the bid and the ax price. So as you can see here, you see the bid price is the best available price for the brokers willing to buy the base currency for an exchange for, um, you know, to sell at the market. So when you look at it, you would normally see two lines. The colors could be any color. So I don't want to say a specific color, but you would see a line at the top and a line at the bottom. The line at the top is the sell line and the line at the bottom is the buy line. So whenever you're about to enter the market, you're not going to enter the market at the top line. You're going to enter at the bottom one. When you're looking to sell, you're not going to enter the market at the top line. You're going to enter the market at the bottom one. Okay. So types of charts. We have line charts. These allow uh, you to view overall trend quickly due to their smooth plotting. Position traders use these most often to see where price may head down the road. Then we have the bar chart. Bar charts are very similar to candlestick charts without a real body. The tick on the left indicates where price opened. The tick mm -hmm. on the right indicates where um, price is closed. And the vertical bar represents extreme highs and lows of price mm -hmm. movement. Jesus, I thought I archived all my WhatsApp chats. Sorry for the disturbance. Um, candlestick charts, these are the most commonly used charts. They are the same as bar charts, except they have a real body to them. If you all don't understand anything, just make sure you go back through the video. Like this, what I say, this will be uploaded on YouTube. Um, and this is very important. I put some time into creating this presentation. I'm obviously not someone that makes a fancy presentation. I did my best with this. And um, I hope everyone, you know, really got value from this. But uh, 